So as part of our global investigation, we sent our field producer and reporter, Jason Conway, to visit the address in Berlin where Louise claims to have lived before being evicted last week. Now this is the same apartment building Ralph's letter bounced back from. This is what Jason discovered. Hi, Dr. Phil. I'm here in Berlin to investigate Louise and an address she gave Ralph that he could use to send her handwritten letters. Okay, here we are pulling up to the building where Louise claims she lived. We're having a little bit of trouble finding the exact entrance because the front of the building seems to be under construction. It should be Lutzoplatz 30, and it is now Lutzoplatz 10, so we're gonna have to go figure out what happened. We can tell that this building is brand new. The building that we thought Louise should have lived in is, has been knocked down. So here we are at the front entrance of the building, although every one of these uh, buzzers is for a business. This is not a residential building anymore. This is now office building. This is another entrance for what used to be Lutzoplatz 30. This part of the building does have apartments for rent, but they're not finished yet. So this is this woman named Louise. She claims to have lived in this building. Have you ever seen her before? No, I've never seen her. No. OK, and do you live in the neighborhood? In the farm, yeah. Do you recognize her? No, no. I've never seen her. Have you ever seen this woman before? No, I've never seen her. And where do you live? Uh, just around the corner. OK. And this building has been under construction for how long? Uh, I don't know exactly how long, but it's been for a while. Um, there used to be a different building. And nobody lives in this building at the moment? I don't think so, no. Yeah. OK, so we put our investigator there, and the address to business. And so that's why your mail bounced back, because there aren't any apartments in that building. Mm -hmm. The address she gave you is phony. Mm -hmm. If you go to what could possibly be a nearby building, where there, the nearest building where there are apartments, that building's under construction. Nobody lives there. There are residences will be in that building, but, that no. but it's not finished. Mm -hmm. there, there, nobody lives there either. So these addresses she's giving you, not true. That's why the card gig went. That's why I came back because mm -hmm. that's that's not a a real address. It's a real address, but there's not anybody there by that name. There aren't any apartments in that building. We asked people on the street. Nobody's ever seen her. They don't know her. Now, of course, that's random. You could talk to 10 people that haven't seen her, but nobody lives in that building. So she's lied to you about her address. She does not live there. So when I go at these things, I, I kind of look at it because there's a pattern to what these people do if they are going to lie to you. They always need money because they've been arrested, hospitalized, they have sick children, money and credit cards have been stolen, frozen bank accounts. They've even said they're shipwrecked. Uh, they've had lost or stolen passports, expired visas or passports, uh, beaten up on the way to the airport, stuck in a foreign country until taxes are paid, attorney's fees, they're widowed. So having looked at the typical patterns, of what scammers tend to do, I wanted to apply that grid to your fact pattern. Mm -hmm. First off, stuck in a foreign country. That's for sure. That's a typical thing they say. Hey, I'm stuck in a foreign country. I need money to get to you. Just send me the money because I'm going to come to you. And when I do, we're going to live happily ever after. OK? They often say they either owe people money or they can't access their bank account. She says that she's got problems with espionage. She needs $20,787. She says she needs $20,000, good allowance for workers, uh, $500,000 debt owed to workers, $40,000 in taxes, $145,000 anti-terrorist clearance, affidavit of true ownership, uh, drug clearance, 55,000 invalid contractors operating license, $28,000 fine reduction for anti-terrorist clearance affidavit of true ownership, $70,000 fine reduction for anti-terrorist clearance. But she has money, she just can't access it. That was on the list. They say, I've got money, I just can't access it. And she sends you a copy of her bank account that says she has $830,700 in her bank account. Domestically, yes. Right.